So let's talk about the big kahuna first, or should I say the big herring? Tell us about the court's decision in Loper Bright Enterprises versus Raimondo. Uh, technically, this was a case about herring fishing and who should pay for government observers on fishing boats, but the reverberations from this will be felt all over the federal government, right? Absolutely. This is yet another example of the kind of case that can sneak up out of nowhere for those of us who are interested in health policy, because it doesn't have anything to do with health policy or our usual subjects. What this had to do was a, a Department of Commerce regulation that required um, fishing boats to pay for observers um, to the extent to which they were fishing. And so this uh, was something that normally would not concern us, but they, the parties introduced a much broader question, which is whether they should overturn a case called Chevron, which deals with the extent to which courts should defer to agency interpretations. Chevron was decided in 1984, and what it's meant is that if a statute is clear, then a court needs to follow the statute. But if it's ambiguous, then the court needs to defer to a reasonable interpretation by the administrative agency. And so this is a particularly troubling case because the regulation at issue had been withdrawn and the the fish you know the fishermen involved in the case had been reimbursed for any fees that they'd paid. So this wasn't really a live issue and it just shows the extent to which the court was really eager to get to this question. Um conservative lawyers and scholars and judges have had Chevron in their sights for a good while and have been critical of it, saying that it gives agencies too much power. Now, those of us who work in health policy think it actually gives the agencies an appropriate amount of power. The agencies are the ones who have the expertise, who have the time, and who have the, you know, the official function of, de of interpreting what a statute means. In the case, you know, the work that we do, Medicaid is the statute that we're most interested in. Medicaid, you know, a notoriously hyper-technical and confusing statute, and just one of hundreds that agencies are interpreting all over the federal government. What administrative agencies do touches on the lives of every American in so many ways, environmental, transportation, health, you know, I could go on and on, but it's 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 all encompassing. Yeah, the war on Chevron has, um, you know, has finally culminated in this final battle. And now the court, you know, has ruled that the court doesn't have to give particular deferences to agencies anymore. They can take a fresh look at everything and say, you know, I don't care what you say, accountable experts with all of your time and your know-how. We're going to take a look at this and see if we agree or not. And if we don't, then, you know, it's a whole new day. So what kind of health issues are we sort of most concerned about here that we would now not necessarily be giving deference to the to the administrative agency? Yeah, I think they, I think I was thinking about this as falling into two categories. There are sort of the high profile, you know, more controversial or ideological issues, issues like, um, you know, bans on uh, discrimination and treatment for LGBTQ people, uh, protections for um, discrimination for people with disabilities regulations that ensure access to services for people with limited English proficiency, you know, anything to do with abortion, a lot of things to do with family planning. These are the kind of things that draw controversy and are always vulnerable to challenge. But then there's a whole nother world of things that people don't really think about, which is the complexities of how rates are determined for hospitals, how rates are determined for managed care plans, how patient billing is conducted all the myriad regulations that govern how hospitals function. And these are the kind of things that just grind along, you know, and keep the wheels of the healthcare industry turning. And what this does is it throws a lot of sand in those gears and sometimes can bring things to a halt. And so it can, you know, it can influence these high profile issues where people might be more vulnerable to discrimination not have access to services in their language, but also the kind of invisible things that you don't see, but you just know as a patient, as a provider, that the system, there's the works are being gummed up and it's not working efficiently and quickly the way it's supposed to. I've seen a few people write that they're worried about agencies getting more timid in light of this, that they might be less inclined to regulate on things that they would normally regulate about. I think that's absolutely true. And I already think the agencies are quite cautious because they're always vulnerable to challenge under the Administrative Procedure Act. 
but this is just going to turn up the heat several notches and keep them out of areas that they really are very much needed, where their expertise and their experience is needed. I think that's absolutely true.